It is four o'clock and we will call the Kerrville City Council workshop to order. Um, Shelley, will you read in our public comments for us? A member of the public may address City Council regarding an item on this agenda. Comments must be relevant to the agenda item. This is not intended to be a question and answer session and prior to speaking, each speaker must fill out the speaker request form and submit it to the city secretary. The speaker request form must be submitted before the meeting is called to order and each speaker is limited to four minutes. There are no citizen speakers signed up. All right, we will move into number two, information discussion and possible action. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, before you today, uh, we do have an exciting item. Uh, as you all know, in, in May, we our citizens uh, allowed for uh, $45 million in bonds, uh, specifically for public safety facility. And so I want to take the opportunity today to provide you guys an update because we've got a number of irons in the fire uh, in regards to progress on purchase of real estate and uh, potential design build processes uh, and uh, other elements that are going to be coming to you. Uh, at your next meeting, uh, but in advance of that, um, similar to what we did with you all and giving you all a briefing on different design and construction techniques uh, for the Heritage Center, we also wanted to be able to bring in some outside expertise uh, through Freeze and Nichols uh, to provide you guys um, some opportunity to give us input on the process that you want uh, to, to embark on. Uh, we heard you loud and clear that uh, you want to you want to move fast uh, and you want to make progress, and so uh, we are uh, losing no time. Uh, in, in getting this in front of you uh, so we can have clear direction on how you all want us to proceed. Uh, so with that, um, we will just jump right in, give a little bit of a refresher. Uh, as you remember, this was a very important Kerrville 2050 action item, uh, guiding principle of placing the highest priority on public safety uh, and considering bond funding for a new public safety facility. Did that, check, uh, got it passed, uh, and that was approved by the citizens. And so uh, again, uh, talking through next steps, oh, back up. Uh, so as you recall, uh, through the uh, consulting uh, architectural services uh, that we engaged in during uh, the bond, uh, uh, safe, uh, the public safety facility bond committee uh, work, uh, provided us some uh, very high level contextual estimates uh, so we could uh, uh, bring that forward to the voters uh, and ask for their approval. Uh, and again, these these aren't hard numbers until we you mm -hmm. know take take those out to um, the, uh, the the bidding process, right, uh, or the construction process. And so, but again, um, gave us some very high level estimates based off the square footages that we were looking at. Uh, building construction cost estimated around 34 million. Uh, we've been able to hone in on the land and infrastructure relocation costs based off of y'all's input and the desire to go ahead and get some properties under contract. Uh, not fully purchased yet, but under contract. Uh, we think that total uh, effort will be about around 1.5 million. Uh, and then uh, the design, bond, insurance, uh, fixtures, furniture and equipment, contingency, kind of that lump sum. As you recall, we got an estimate from the architectural service at the time that said that's around 28% mm -hmm. over what your hard construction costs are. So that's really what gets you to that total project cost of the 45 million. Any questions on that piece? So um, this is a draft, very, very draft site plan, uh, but as you recall, uh, as uh, you all authorized us to go ahead and put uh, the seven acres at Clearwater Paseo and Rio Monte under contract, obviously we wanted to make sure that uh, the square footage and uh, the parking requirements uh, could be accommodated at that location. And so uh, we did engage uh, with the uh, architectural services to be able to uh, just roughly uh, frame that out for what they felt like uh, would be required from a parking situation uh, and the square footage of the building, just to make sure that the site would work. Uh, and as you recall uh, from the briefing with you, uh, there are some utility relocations that will be required uh, on that site. And those have been basically built into the purchase price. Uh, or the pricing of that property to be able to accommodate each other, knowing that that, that is a, a, a limitation of the site. And can you, I'm sorry, you might have just said it, can you, who did this? Uh, this was the uh, consulting firm uh, that we utilized during the, the bond the committee work. Yes, okay, that's correct. You. And again, it is just draft. Uh, yeah. When we engage with official design services, they may have, this may get altered. Yeah, I was just curious where the can, concept came from. Uh -huh. Can you explain what the police asset support buildings are? What are those? Who, who's housed in there? Um, so I, I 
Chief, or is that feel free to for jump equipment? in here, but uh, basically that is some of the auxiliary storage components okay. Uh, okay. outside of what they would be keeping in a, a more safe and secure location. Okay. Uh, as well as some training space, some physical tra training space that we don't currently have uh, okay. for uh, defensive tactics, those types of trainings. Okay. And again, that, those locations may move on this site. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, in particular, we're, we are uh, very cognizant about uh, the, the building location on the far right, which would be the north, uh, mm -hmm. northeast of that location, uh, butting up against... Uh, the uh, uh, auxiliary uh, uh, uses there uh, mm -hmm. next door. Uh, and so th that may actually move closer mm -hmm. to uh, that, the, the larger building structure. But again, just wanted to make sure all the puzzle pieces would fit on that site uh, right. before we sure. proceeded with it. Uh, so with that, I'd like to uh, ask Mr. John New uh, to come to the podium and speak uh, about the state approved construction delivery methods. Well, good afternoon, Mayor, Council. Congratulations, Mayor. Congratulations, thank you. Thank you. Councilman Herring. So, would uh, you would you be more comfortable I, I coming to, to this podium? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter to me. Yeah, clicker. I won too. Yeah, she won too. <laughs> Brenda also won. <laughs> Brenda was also elected. And and, and and congratulations again. You you uh you agreed see, to do it again. It. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. It's official. Well, great to see all of you all of y'all again. Uh, if you do recall. Uh, EA mentioned it just a minute ago. Um, you know, we kind of went through this a similar process when we were talking about the Heritage Center. You you weren't here, but I'll try to provide some background on on what we did there, and then it's pretty much the same process here. So we're going to go through that same same deal again tonight or this afternoon. So as you can see, I mean, the state has several different delivery methods that you can that you can have buildings constructed by, um, and the three that we're going to talk about today, real briefly, just the first one is just traditional low bid. That's what Historically, most people are most familiar with it's just low bid where you, you hire a designer, they design it, and then you go out and you, you put it out for bid and the contractor bid on it and the low bid is typically who you pick. Um, that is an option, but that's not what we're going to, we're not, we would never recommend that one for a facility like this. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of getting to be uh, kind of the, the way we used to do things on vertical construction, vertical meaning buildings, as opposed to horizontal, which is heavy civil or treatment plants, pipelines, things like that. You would never want to do a, a low bid. But the other two options we have is construction management risk, which we did not talk about last time, and then design build, which is what mm -hmm. we did talk about and what we recommended and y'all ultimately decided on for the Heritage Center. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through that same process tonight. So the, these, are the, these are the two that we're going to talk about. I'm not talking about low bid again unless you guys ask a question. All right, so <clears throat> the, the, basically the first item is just the, this uh, construction manager at risk. I'm going to call it CMAR, so if you hear me say CMAR, that's what that means. Basically, you do select a designer independently from a contractor, so you still have two separate entities, um, but it's handled a little bit differently because typically you will hire the, the contractor a little bit earlier in design, so they actually work in a little bit more of a collaborative fashion with the designer. So, that, so there, are some, there are absolutely some benefits in going that route. Uh, you always want to have the builder involved as early as possible in the project. This is a good way to do it. I'm not going to go through all of those items there, but the bottom line is that's the biggest difference between design bid build, the traditional side, is you bring the builder on early. But um, it is different from design build because you actually have two separate contracts, a design contract and a construction contract. Y'all ask me as I'm going along because I'm, I'm going through this fast and I'm, I'm not saying a lot of things that I can fill in a lot of blanks if you have questions. Can you hold for just a second? Sure. I'll read this real quick. And I can read, I can read through a couple of them too, just... Some of them. We haven't done okay. Even okay. So, well, on the on the designer, uh, I mean, basically, you hire the designer. They they will do the design, develop the plans and specifications. They'll take that site plan uh, that 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 was earlier in the in the slideshow, and they'll take that and they'll develop it. They'll work with the owner. They'll work with the various uh, users. You know, whether it's the police department, fire, um, and the other groups, IT, and the other groups that you're going to have in that building. So they will work with them and, and develop, basically just develop the plans. I mean, they will go through and, and develop a complete design. Um, then they'll, of course, it'll be uh, advertised for bidding is really more of an RFP for the construction manager at risk, the CMAR services. We'll, then we'll go through and select them. They would evaluate those proposals from the CMAR, working with the city to bring that CMAR on board. And again, that would be early, early in the game, usually at a, at, 
usually you want to bring on the CMAR at about the 30% design stage, or in, in architectural world, they'll talk about schematic design, design development, and construction documents, but you'll bring them on as early as possible, so you have both parties under contract as early as possible, and then, um, and then the, again, that's, that's the process they work through at that point. They're, the designer is working on the design, and the, the CMAR is working with them to kind of do some checks and balances. They will look at the design, provide constructability review comments. Uh, they'll, they'll update the, the cost estimate as, you know, we start out with the, the budgetary cost, but then they'll start drilling down and provide more and more details on the cost, and then they'll also develop a project schedule. So does that, mm -hmm. does that help? Okay, so that's basically what the CMAR process is. Now, this is what it looks like. Again, the, the solid, you have the owner, obviously City of Kerrville, the solid lines are, are what we would call contractual lines. So you actually have a contract with the CMAR contractor and then a contract with the designer and then that dotted line is just, they gotta work together, but they're not actually, neither one of them are under contract with the other. They're <coughs> both under contract to the city. So that's pretty simple work chart there. Now, on the design bill, <clears throat> this is pretty much what I had, we, we went through the last time. Again, similar, similar fashion in the way that the RFQ is developed, a request for qualifications, but in this case, the designer and the builder are on the same team, one entity. It may be one company, it may be uh, just two, an architect and a contractor that have teamed up. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's just bottom line is it's gonna be one entity that, that gets together to do the design and the construction all as one group. So that, it, but as far as the, the process, the first thing you have to do according to uh, Texas Government Code 2269 is we have to have a, the, the uh, council has to authorize this through a resolution to proceed in this fashion, just like we did on mm -hmm. the Heritage Center. So that's mm -hmm. what ultimately we're, the ask will be, is, or the recommendation is gonna be, if you agree with the uh, design build option, then that's what we would, um, want to bring back in, a, in, a, in the next council meeting for, for action. So, you, you, but once the resolution is done, then, then we would go through the whole process of, of uh, getting the design build team on board. Now, as far as what happens once they're on board, it is similar, except that, the, the, and I'll talk about this more in the, uh, uh, I guess, some of the benefits, but it's still a similar process of going through the design, except just this time, instead of the, the con contractor being kind of collaborating with the designer, they're actually on the same team. It's actually like the, it's the same, it's the same uh, organization, if you will. So that offers a few benefits that I'll talk about in a minute. So would you like me to go through any of these in more detail or any questions so far on design build? When, when you do a design build, you pay one, you'll be paying one entity. Yes, ma'am, that's okay. correct. That's Not exactly two. right. Okay. It is one, you only have one contract, and so they would submit invoices whenever they do monthly or whatever, usually by deliverable, but yes. Mm -hmm. One contract, so you only pay one party. And the number two on the city side, um, that's? that That's the role that we are playing okay, for the city. Uh, Freeze and Nichols is playing for the yeah, city on okay. the on the Heritage Center, and that's what uh, we've talked about doing for okay. this for you okay. as well I, on this one. Okay. That's correct. Now, that is a separate contract. We are not, we right. would not be part of the design build team. Right. We're just working to uh, work with the city. Yes, sir. Are you the owner's advocate on the on the Heritage Center project? Yes, sir. Thank you. And the primary element to that contract, big part of that scope of that contract, is making sure that we are complying with all the elements of state law mm -hmm. that are required for the design build process. Um, obviously, you know, Friesen Nichols has done this um, much more often than the city has, uh, and so we want to make sure we've dotted all our I's and crossed mm -hmm. all our T's in regards to state state law compliance. Design build is becoming a lot more prevalent delivery method in Texas, but it hasn't always been that way. On vertical construction, historically, it's, you, you do see a lot of CMAR, like schools are very often done with the CMAR process, but design build is becoming much more popular uh, because it, uh, it does offer some advantages, and that's, that's one of the main reasons we're talking about Which it Which is the more expensive of the two? <clears throat> you know, if I really knew that answer, I, I would be on a beach somewhere. I don't, it's, it's hard. They're, they're, they're really pretty similar. They're, both offer some advantages over design bid build to be, but I don't, I don't know that you can really say that one is more expensive than the other. Okay. I don't think there's a significant difference between the two. You do have a better chance of accelerating the schedule, which could relate to some cost savings. Uh, and certainly, uh, you know, especially if you're, if, 
if you're having to do so, if you're having to spend money because you can't relocate mm -hmm. your people, mm -hmm. there could be some cost savings, which in in essence could be yeah. at the end of the day could be less expensive. Okay. But so, but you do have some opportunities for time savings. I'm not. I wouldn't. I would not say if you hear somebody say that one is cheaper than the other. I'd say yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. I think it's okay. pretty close to the same. But one of the big advantages, and John will speak to this later, is that option for, or not the option, it's, it's the process of getting to that guaranteed maximum price. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's a very budget-driven item because everyone, right. all three entities, designer, contractor, and owner, are aware from the very get-go, this is the maximum price. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the timeline that we're expecting. When the, when the RFQ is issued, they will have that budget information. Whatever budget information we put in there, they'll know what that is and uh, they know that's what they've got to live by. And they've got that, that box. They won't have a lot more detail than what they have, what you see right now. There'll be a little bit more for design criteria package, but it won't be a lot more than that. And uh, they will take that and then they will, as they develop the design, they will develop a guaranteed maximum price, as EA said, and uh, that's what they're locked in with. And they, they know what the budget is and they have to make sure they stay within that budget. They can't, the designer can't design something that's you know, say forty million, mm -hmm. and they've only got thirty million. Mm -hmm. It's like they, they won't, that won't even that won't even come before staff. It's going to be like, no, this is this is what we need from a sixty-seven thousand mm -hmm. square foot facility, and uh, it's got to be done for you know, uh, you know that price that that's in the budget or less. Well, it, you know, it just makes sense to me that that you have more. It would be. The potential to be more successful in coming in under budget and on time would happen more so with the design build aspect rather than the separate contractor versus separate design team. You, you, you always have a better chance whenever you, you know, the, the, the fewer entities involved, mm -hmm. the better chance you have, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> and so that is one of the big, and again, so I'm saying you could, there could be some cost savings there that could definitely be through other avenues like time savings and whatever. but. There's a good chance that it could be done more efficiently. And again, it, a, a big thing is the fact that you have a budget and they have to stay within that budget. They're, they have no choice. Okay. Because if they come and say, well, it's going to cost $5 yeah. million more, it's like, it's going to cost you $5 million more, not us. Yeah. Right? So you have to figure something else out. Okay. That's unique to this process. Pardon? So this is, that's unique to the design build yeah. process? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, do you have the organizational flow chart like you had on the other one because yeah. I had a question on the, the contracts so there's going to be a separate contract with the owner's advocate or representative mm -hmm. from the city and then a separate contract with the designer and the builder bless, bless you, you. Um, correct so that's two separate contracts really. well with the yeah with the owner the owner would have two contracts one with right. the owner's rep or advocate which would be it, you know, uh, assuming we move forward with this with Freeze and Nichols, and then the other one be with the design builder. That's correct. Those are the two contracts. Okay. There are other contracts involved, but they're not directly mm -hmm. with you, the owner. Right. How does this okay. process deal with change orders? So change orders, uh, that's a good question. And typically, uh, um, there, would, there would not be the ability to have change orders for th things that are that, that could have been reasonably anticipated by the design. Like if, if there's going to be the designer make some design changes, that's something that the, the builder will have to cover with their own, with their own uh, funds. They, they might have a, a small contingency fund in there. But the only time you would see a change order is, <clears throat> number one, if, if the city decided they wanted to add scope, mm -hmm. okay, that would be legitimate, you know, add square footage or change some, something that, that, <coughs> that they decided they wanted. So that would be one item. There could be unforeseen conditions, but we're going to do, you know, there will be geotechnical studies done, survey done, all that research done on the site, but I guess there's always a possibility of, of hanging some type of unforeseen conditions, which would also justify a change order. But those, um, that's really the only two opportunities that they would have would be a scope change by the owner or possibly some type of unforeseen condition. You hearing You hear nowadays a little bit about, you know, kind of a, you know the way the economy is and, and the way pricing you y'all have I know I know everybody's experiencing when you fill up at the gas pump mm -hmm. but um, you know that that would be some contractors are trying to make issues of that too where prices material prices are going up like that but again this will all be locked in so mm -hmm. so those are the two, those are the two primary ways that you would you would experience a change order is that the same for both processes yeah the the uh, pretty much the same yes it's there's not there's not a lot of 
lot of difference there. Um, you, you could have a little bit, again, going back to, to two separate contracts, you could have a contractor come in and say, on the CMAR process, you could have a contractor come in and say, well, I didn't know the designer was going to design, you know, the gold-plated whatever. And so that's going to cost more. And then it becomes a mm -hmm. kind of a, a little bit of a battle. And then that's when you look to architects like, well, why did you do that? And, and it, come, it can become, a little, that, that's where some friction can come in. On the design bill, you can't have that. Because mm -hmm. once again, if the designer has an issue with the contractor, they're on the same team and vice versa. They're on yeah. the same team. So uh, they have to work that out. Mm -hmm. So a few of the benefits, we talked about a few of them, and again, ask questions, please. But single point of responsibility for both design and construction. I've said that five times. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's key for you guys to remember. Uh, that's that's a, a big piece of that. Faster overall project delivery. Um, we were just talking about mm -hmm. that a minute ago. Mm -hmm. you, there is a good opportunity to be able to get this done faster, primarily because you can do some, uh, you, a lot of times you can start the construction before design's even finished. Mm -hmm. You might can start doing some of the site work, some of the utility work, yeah. things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. You can do that before everything is completely done. Uh, with So that does offer some, and that's what you kind of call early out bid packages. It just means they put out bid packages for like the like maybe the dirt work or, or yeah. water line, sewer line type stuff. They could do that a little earlier. Mm -hmm. More collaboration between the builder and the designer. Now you do have collaboration on the CMAR. Don't misunderstand that. But this one is a little bit, it's even tighter because they're literally on the, they're literally on the yeah. same team. Yeah. And that is one of the strategic advantages that we feel like for this project in particular, uh, because this is a proposed to be a multi-departmental facility. And so it really front loads that input at the beginning uh, with mm -hmm. all, everybody around the table, contractor, mm -hmm. designer, and the multiple members of the mm -hmm. city uh, input team, so to mm -hmm. speak. Uh, and that way, <coughs> really are no surprises throughout the process. It does lend itself well because um, I've done a few facilities similar to this where there's multiple departments that are all going to be housed in one facility, and mm -hmm. sometimes there can be some interesting discussions about who gets what, and you know, and, and that kind of thing. So yeah. trying to be fair to everybody mm -hmm. and making sure everybody's taken care of. In this case, yeah, you get all that worked out up front, and then from there they, they just, uh, you know, at that point they've gotten the user, the, the facility user input, and they know what they need to do on the police side, the fire side, IT side, whatever else. And, uh, and then they move forward with their uh, understanding they still have that budget to live by. So going back to the cost part of it, I think I got a little bit confused or maybe I misunderstood. So comparing both the CMAR and the design build process, with the CMAR you have two different contracts with your um, design contractor and your builder. Yes, sir. And then you go over to the build process, and now you have one contract for both. Would that amount for both? So here's what I'm trying to get at. Would we not be paying possibly more for if we went through the CMAR process? Because in addition to the, um, the design con consultant and the builder, we'd also be paying for the owner's rep. Um. Well, if you do the with well, the C, the CMAR process, there's those two contracts, but you wouldn't have, uh, you wouldn't necessarily have an owner's rep in that in that process. On the design build, you would. So it did I did I misunderstand? It does. So would we not be paying more? I mean, then yeah, I, I misspoke on that. Would we not be paying more on the design build process? Well, because of that additional element to it. There, it is possible there could be a little bit more because you do have a you do have a, another party involved. So that that there that is a possibility, but you also uh, typically, your um, your designer on CMAR, or sometimes you have a third party. But if you don't have a third party, you would have a CMAR where they they provide some of those additional services as well. Like when when we act when we participate in like when Freeze and Nichols works on a CMAR type project, we will act as the designer and then we will also act as the owner's rep mm -hmm. uh, because we're still an advocate for the owner because we still work for you directly. Um, so there's still a piece of that. It just kind of gets it just kind of gets blended in on the CMAR process. On the design build, you see it separately because we are literally a third party. Because now the designer is not your, not necessarily your advocate because they don't work for you. Mm -hmm. They're working for the contractor. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Does mm -hmm. the does the owner's advocate have something of a fiduciary responsibility to the owner? N not no. It's no. Uh, well, well, what we, are you advocating for then? Well, we we what we do is we monitor we 
make sure that the the design builder is following the process they need mm -hmm. to do and just act on on your behalf but not not from a fiduciary standpoint uh, other than just to monitor the funds and, and see that everything is being done in accordance with um, the the original scope and the and the and the the desire of the city. You're advocating basically. for process and funding. Correct. Mm -hmm. Follow the law, make sure everybody's following the law. And then when it gets into design, make sure that that uh, they are following the requirements that uh, that has been laid out by the city for what is ne what needs to be designed. And then, I'm sorry to ask so many questions. This is no, the first time. Keep yeah. asking. That's fine. And then in construction, you know, you, that would also be what we would support too from just the standpoint of construction administration, construction contract, just supporting Basically, augmenting uh, Kyle, uh, Kyle's staff, and just working with him to help to help make sure the project gets delivered on time, on budget, minimal mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. That owner's rep contract is also a very, very small portion of the project. Yeah. Yeah. No, not, I wasn't concerned about. I was yeah. concerned about what is your role. Mm -hmm. if, yeah, that, if we're contracting with you, what are we getting for it? Yeah, that's the bottom line. Is we represent we are representing the owner because in this case, uh, in a lot of cases. Um, we have exp we have worked through these types of projects a lot more than what the city has, so it just offers some some assurances to the staff and to council that that we are crossing t's dotting i's from a legal standpoint and then also just from a project delivery standpoint that you're getting what you paid for. Yeah. I'm not I'm not attempting <clears throat> to question no, I, that's the integrity fine. or I just want I don't understand the role. Yeah, that's that's primarily what we would do is is we just take care of step by step making sure that all the processes are followed. Uh, all the way through, from all the way through procurement, uh, the RFQ preparation, uh, the shortlist, the, R the RFP, the request for proposal. When you start getting pricing, uh, the shortlist interview will will lead the guide the staff through all of those processes until we get them on on board, the design builder on board, and then at that point we would um, we can we we would basically uh, uh, handle all the meetings, you know, uh, facilitate the meetings. Make sure that design progresses according to the schedule. Make sure we're getting the submittals in uh, that we're supposed to be getting from the design builder. Uh, and again, just just making sure they are following all the steps that um, that are laid out either by the law or by the specifications or by what the staff is requesting. But you're not handling the inspections. The city will continue. We can, we can, but typically, typically we would we would we can augment that, and we probably would augment that some, but that would that would come mainly out of engineering under Kyle. But that's what we've done for Kyle for years is augment his staff when he needs sure. it. Is this, uh, is the design build, it's becoming more popular? Are there contractors and, and uh, designers that, that really enjoy doing this, that it's becoming a, a good thing to do? It, it's becoming more popular, and uh, I, I don't know if you just ask each one of them individually if they really enjoy it or not. I think they mm -hmm. do because they, they, they keep doing it. And they, they've got to be making some money doing it, so I think it's it's turned into a uh, definitely a delivery method that is very prevalent outside of Texas and becoming much much more prevalent in Texas. In fact, Joel Kokomore, who I brought along with me, he in, in his former life he he was a, uh, worked for a very large vertical contractor, and y'all did the San Antonio uh, facility. W which facility was that? The the. We, uh, in, back in 2010, we built the um, public safety headquarters for the city of San Antonio. Mm. And, and that was done design build. So th this gets very common in, in today's world. So usually on the school side, you still see more CMAR, but on other types of facilities, you're seeing a design build. You see the build advantage really is it's, it's just more efficient or what? Yeah, it, it's for the, from the owner's perspective, it's more efficient. Yeah, That's and you right. really act as our project manager to Correct. make sure that the design and the build are going according to what the city's expectations are. That's correct. So, and I could see on a, I could, I could see on a CMAR, mm -hmm. if something's not going right, then blame and blame. That's right. And blame right. and blame, and it's not. It's the, it's the builder. I designed this, but they built this, or no, it's the what they designed. That's how. Mm -hmm. the, I, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the first. That's what pops into my mind is, is the inefficiency, and if. You know, you you don't have you don't have any cover as an organization in this other process because you have no choice but to be in it together. You can't. I mean, that right. that's that's one of the efficiencies I see. Yeah, the CMAR process really 
puts the city in between. Right, and you're the, the city's here, and the like contractor, and the we parent end up to these two. It, it's, it can be yeah. a very difficult position yeah. sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good yeah. analogy. Yeah. The mom said. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> um, so. The, there's a the, you can see the other couple of you know obviously you just said it you just said it on that fourth bullet is minimize adversarial relationships so it does certainly help that certainly from the city because if they're going to fight about it okay to use that analogy with the parent then the kids get to go to the room and they can fight it out because mm -hmm. it's like I don't want to hear about it y'all need to work it out yeah. right. because we've already told you what we want you know what our budget is mm -hmm. y'all take it uh, mm -hmm. you have to take it outside. And then again, again, the builders directly involved in the design oh, press early oh, because they're there at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So John, if you could just pour to the next <laughs> yeah, slide, I'll right. speak to the uh, next steps. Uh, click it again. There we go. So obviously today we just wanted to update you on the project status uh, and uh, provide uh, time for consideration of the different available methods. Uh, again, June 28th, uh, we would propose a number of different action items for you all uh, if, uh, if, if you all so desire. Um, we'll be uh, uh, looking for authorization from you for staff to go ahead and complete the real estate purchase. Uh, we do have that eligible for executive session today if you, if you have any questions about it, uh, but we are uh, honing in on that, uh, being able to, to go ahead and close on that property. Uh, uh, we'll be looking to you all for authorization for us to go ahead and finalize and execute an engineering contract for the relocation of the wastewater line. Uh, and then if you desire, uh, we will need to, uh, if you would like to move forward with the design build process, we will need to put, again, a resolution on there for you to, to formally authorize us to do that. Uh, and then uh, uh, we'll be looking to, uh, for authorization from you all to finalize and execute a contract for the owner's representation services. Uh, and then we will have uh, Ann Berger Intrican, uh, our financial advisor, uh, who will uh, be on hand to uh, speak to current market conditions uh, for the sale of the bonds and the proposed timeline. So, is it a general? I mean, obviously, it's being proposed to us to consider the design build. Mm -hmm. So, it's coming to us that way, which implies that staff is on board with this concept and feels that it is going to be the most effective way to proceed with this. Is that it is, what we're... It is our staff recommendation. Right. Uh, um, again, we wanted to bring it for you today and just talk through the different options, but right. um, as we've talked through it, we, we think it will be the most efficient process going forward. Uh, we think it will be the most efficient from a time perspective, uh, and again, we'll provide the ability to get that input early on and get everybody around the table to bring you guys a project on budget and on time, um, we, we feel like it'll give us the most likelihood. Council, other thoughts, other questions? Roman? Oh, no, not right now. I don't think so. Anything? Thank you. No, I'm good. Joe? So today's workshop is just to understand a little bit more about the three methods that are allowed to do this project. You, what I'm understanding from this next step is you, the staff, will recommend uh, that on June 28th, which is our next meeting, I suppose, a series of actions. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. We're but, not making a decision today. No, um, but if, if uh, you all have serious heartburn about the design bill process, uh, you know, obviously we're, we won't put that resolution uh, on your agendas going forward. The problem is 80% of the people up here have already been through this. And 20% is trying to catch up. Sure, sure. I don't have heartburn. I'm not burned. I just have a, the days and confused look. Sure. Days and Understood. Is there anything we can do, Joe, to no, I, help? I, I think I think I understand the process. I think, I, in my opinion, it sounds more efficient. I think all of us want to use our public funds efficiently as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, But I haven't been through this before, and y'all all have, so. We haven't really gone through it. We've just approved it. Just approved well, it. I mean, you've done some of these already on, on the Heritage Center. Oh, as far as the action yeah. items? Yeah, sure. You've been through the process yeah. of, of design. Yes, sir. But we actually have not seen it in action. 
project. Yes, yeah, approved it. Yeah, we're in process on that one. Uh, and, you know, again, it's not a posted item tonight, but it's certainly a, a process that we've embarked on. We're, as you all know, uh, we are uh, wrapping up those uh, uh, qualification statements. Those are coming in um, uh, here as we speak. And so um, I think the deadline for that set uh, is next Tuesday. And so uh, we're, we're in, in process on that one as well. But so far, it's gone very well, and we've received quite a bit of interest. Mr. Hoppy, is, is Freeze Nichols the owner's uh, advocate on that project? Yes, sir. They are. So we're going to go ahead from what these steps are. We're going to go ahead and as not part of the overall, we're going to go ahead and take care of the lines beforehand before we get into further. Se separate project. That's correct. Project. That is this a is separate that construction like. project. Right. right. Yeah, that will not be part of the vertical construction. It's part of what we're paying for, but it's not part of the package that we're looking at. Correct. That's correct. Yeah, it, that, that will be that that will be uh, more than likely a more straightforward engineering yeah. and construction contract sure. traditional, uh, uh, and that again because it's very straightforward. Yeah, and then how does that? I mean, but do we have to have the basic concept? Which I guess you said this is is pretty basic the the picture, but I mean, in essence, there's not a lot of room for changes to the big things like the building the, the central building being in the middle of the property and the parking being on, around the outside so you can already determine where to move those lines generally the, yes correct yeah it's going to be moved to the edge uh, of the property the the design build team once it's moved they'll know where the line's going to be the design build team will and then they'll have a little bit of uh you know they have a we little bit of flexibility yeah. to shift things around i mean it may not end up looking exactly perfectly square like you see it now they might change the shape slightly or they sure. might shift it a little sure. bit depending on the way the parking lot lays out the way the access drives are uh things like but that we're just getting it site ready yeah really that's correct yeah. that's correct but the line will be out of the way so they they'll pretty much have most of the site to do with, with what they what they would like and it'll be you don't have a lot of options because it's a big building right. on mm -hmm. the side i mean there's not a lot of extra room right, right. so you, there's not a whole lot you can do with it right. from that standpoint yeah. The twenty eighth, we won't be executing contract for uh, owner representation. We'll be authorizing the execution of same. That's correct. That's, that's Don't we correct. have financial information about that contract at that time? In other words, to be blunt, how much will we know how much it's going to cost at that time? Yeah. So we are developing the scope for that right now. Uh, we didn't want to be presumptuous that um, you know you all wanted mm -hmm. to move forward that process and that. Part of it actually is not required necessarily for the 28th. Uh, we could, that could be. Uh, I mean, it's know. fine. I just want to know when we make that decision, will we know what we're on the hook for? Yeah. Based off y'all's feedback today, we, we will certainly hone in on what we think that that scope uh, and that cost of that contract looks like in advance of the 28th. This is a premature question, but what are the chances that it could be someone locally? Do we have contractors and architects locally that you're aware of or that staff is aware of that do this? I think, I think you will have, you could have some local involvement. Uh, I would have to lean on Stuart or Kyle maybe from a contractor standpoint that, you know, you're talking about 30 something million dollars. I'm not sure if there's contractors in town that are capable of projects that size. And I, I know it's premature, so I, I mean, but do you well, have it's a, any it's a good idea. question because on the Heritage Center we talked about that too and you know that's a lot more it's a good a, a better possibility of getting local because it's you know I know I know it's still a lot of money but still industry wise it's a it's a smaller number so mm -hmm. it's more likely this one um I, yeah Stur can maybe speak to that but it's I there's definitely plenty of them in San Antonio and Austin for sure but so the Heritage Center we have we have a bunch of local contractors that are bidding on that so we're real optimistic that we're going to be able to find something like this is a lot bigger project than mm -hmm. than we've built here to be quite honest with you and it's part of the reason we've asked Freeze and Nichols to mm -hmm. be our client our, our client rep because they've done this they've, mm -hmm. they've gone through this process they fully understand it and our level of our level of understanding is we need somebody like that and so as I think a lot of local builders are going to be the same way this is really big compared to what a lot of local mm -hmm. guys do um, and so we are going to entertain all the local offers we get, but I think we're also going to look outside as well to make sure it's competitive. In addition to that, we've got several large projects that are ensuing. Uh, for instance, you've got uh, the uh, 
State Hospital expansion, uh, which is kind of wrapping up, and so mm -hmm. we think we may have some interested parties there. Uh, you've got a very large uh, new surgery center that's going to be happening during the same time frame uh, at the hospital. Uh, the USDA facility uh, is also going to be under construction, so um, we're going to have some large contractors in town, and so that mobilization cost, um, that, that this project may be attractive for them while their crews are already here to, to mm -hmm. be able to jump on. There's a there's a really good chance of, of pulling in local involvement uh, for, for the subcontractors because mm -hmm. similar to any other type of construction, there's going to be multiple trades. Obviously, in this, this type of facility, every trade you can imagine will be involved, yeah. and a, a lot of those will be uh, could could be local. Uh, certainly, certainly in the in this region and, and maybe right here in Kerrville. So there's there's going to be opportunities for for those uh, for those uh, smaller companies to get to participate. One of the things we've heard, of course, is to use local as much as we can. So, and and we can, and and also in the, on the Heritage Center, we put in the RFQ, we did add a little bit of a local preference. So you actually got a you actually got a slight That's edge right, yeah. on the points mm -hmm. uh, if you were local. We can do the same thing here. Uh, we don't want to go. We, we can do something very similar here to where we can encourage local involvement, and we could even encourage that through uh, uh, giving you a few more points on the score if you pull in local. Uh, local oh, folks. Okay. So we can do that too to kind of encourage it. Uh, you know, you don't want to get too carried away with that, but we can certainly make it uh, a little more appealing to use local folks. It would okay. seem like it would be more likely of a scenario that the subcontractors could be local mm -hmm. than the big yes. design build right. firm itself. Absolutely. Because typically the design, the, the, the builder part of the design build firm, they, they, they will not, just like any other general contractor that builds buildings, vertical buildings like City Hall or whatever, uh, they're not gonna, they do not have the staff to do every type of trade. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna do electrical, they're not gonna do mechanical, they're not gonna do they're plumbing, gonna subs. that's gonna be subs. And y'all have local mm -hmm. mechanical contractors and electrical and plumbers and, and things like that. And as well as site work and utilities, I mean, a lot of it can be done right here, out, out, out of Kerrville. Well, we'd like some, some of the dollars to stay here. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I understand. And oh, I, I will ahead. point out just quickly, and I, I didn't, me I mentioned it when we talked about the Heritage Center, but I didn't hear it. Just kind of back to your point, uh, uh, Councilman, is especially since you weren't here the last time, is um, Texas Government Code 2269 does require uh, support from um, an owner's advocate. Now, it can be somebody on staff if they have the experience to do that, but they know that in Texas it's difficult for a lot of cities because you just haven't done that much of it. So they do have a requirement in, in the statute to state that you need to have a representative uh, to, to act on your behalf. Mm -hmm. To me, I, I see similarity to, to <clears throat> when we are, you know, facing a, a federal lawsuit and, and we have outside counsel come in, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very specific thing that, that we don't deal with often and so uh, that's that's in my mind that's how i that, that's the most common reason is is you you bring somebody in that's done you know Specialized. done a, a lot mm -hmm. right that same thing we're, we're going to expect the same thing from the design builder we want right. somebody that's done these the, types the, of the facilities time. why because they've done a lot of them they'll know, they know how to do them so that's exactly why because you're not your city of kerrville is not going to do very many 67 thousand square right. foot right. facilities right so <laughs> we better not be i don't want to do another one. one yeah get kind of expensive uh -huh. so. Um, anything else for us? All, All right. for me, unless you have more questions. Okay. And I'll be glad to talk to you offline mm -hmm. if you would like. If you have more questions, uh, uh, you can re uh, reach me through uh, EA and be glad to talk Thank to you. you. Or anybody else for that matter. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I just Thank have you. a question that is um, a little bit off topic, but the, the design build team, say they hire subcontractors to do, say, the plumbing mm -hmm. or whatever. Are they responsible for doing the inspections, or are we responsible for doing those inspections? We are. Okay. The city, the city would be. Okay. So when, whenever we do any type of project, uh, building specifically, engineering looks at it you know, basically per plan. Okay. But we still have our building department who's going to look at it per code. Okay. So in addition, uh, I'll give a good example that uh, was a Friesen Nichols project, Legion List Station. We had Freeson Nichols inspecting, we had building inspecting, and then we had our engineering inspectors uh, okay. on the project as well. Okay. So we're, we're looking for plan conformance as well as Freeson Nichols, but we don't 
I don't even try to interpret the building codes. Okay. So that's what Steve Riggs and his department will come out and, and do on a regular basis. They, they still follow that procedure. Okay. So. But that also doesn't mean that the general contractor, I mean, it's their duty to be supervising their subs. Right. right. Making sure the work that they do right. is quality work. Yeah, right. that, uh, that's why I was asking right. questions. Yeah, really. we, we, we will inspect it no different than we inspect a private project. Okay. Right. Like we'll be inspecting the hospital or we'll be inspecting USDA or we inspected the middle school. Okay. Um, so that, that will be continue to be our function, but we're, we're going to rely on that general contractor to still be making sure their subs are doing the work responsibly. Okay. okay. All right, Council, Are, do we have consensus to give um, staff the authority to move ahead with uh, the, are there five there, I believe? Five. The five proposed items uh, on June 28th. Brenda's okay? Joe's okay? Kim? It's okay? Roman? Okay. All right, I think you have consensus. Very good. Well, we'll right. have a number of items on your 28th agenda, so we'll, right. keep, we'll keep moving forward. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, then uh, at this time, uh, we will move into executive session. Uh, do we have a motion? So moved. And we need 551.072, oh, yes. and we need... I guess 551.087, five, five, right? 071, 072, and 087. 087. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let me let me make that motion make that, that we go into executive session under items 551.071, 551.072, five, five, and 551.087. And I'll second that. All right. Can I clarify, Mayor, the motion is, are we staff still going in for the public safety facility? We, we do not need to unless you all have any questions there, but um, I... We, we're good um, with just 3A. So. It, without breaching confidentiality, at least before, so I know whether I might we want some information on that, what would we really be discussing if we chose to go in on that? There were, if there were just any questions that were generated out of the discussion that we just had, uh, you know, regarding like the real in estate regards to real estate, but uh, we, we don't have any uh, unless you all have questions or anything that you need from us. But. I'm just wondering if, if council has anything else that I, I'm fine if y'all don't have anything else to present us if it's the same what we talked about before mm -hmm. then okay do you that's have correct. something else that you're I mean I don't understand do you have something else we need to talk about no I don't have anything we need to talk about I just I know what was discussed before I don't know if you want to get caught up on it a little bit too um, what are you talking about? I can do that offline if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. I was just curious if there's anything else. I won't else hold to do you guys it. up. Y'all, y'all. It, it was on the agenda, so I just wanted to make sure there's nothing else we need to add on that. Yeah, okay. okay. So, so we'll be going in on three A and. And I'll second that motion. And well, I think we well, so, so, oh, you know, Okay, you got it. So, to be clear, now I'm confused. To be clear. Are we saying in this motion that we are unable to speak any further about public safety? It's still underneath the same items. I don't particularly have something, but if a question comes up, is that what you're trying to preclude us from doing? But no, I wasn't precluding anything. I was, the agenda had both items on, and the uh, sections that were read, it looked like we read all three of them from the first item. So I just wanted to make gotcha. sure, especially because Mr. Hoppy said, we have this item, and if y'all have anything or if we need to talk about anything. So I'm not trying to preclude anything. I was just trying to make sure we're on the same page. Were we going to talk about anything if we need to? That's all I was just taking, trying to look at. I would think that if something comes up, we should be able to ask Well, questions. we're actually there under 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 both. Uh, under yes, both. so we should be okay. Yeah. It's fine. I was just curious. Okay. Thank all right. Me. We have a motion. We have a second. And all in favor? Aye. Rise in. Thank you. Everyone agrees. So we will close the workshop at 448, and we will open the executive session at 448. We will go upstairs. Upstairs, yes.